Uh, and I now recognize for five minutes, Mr. Savon. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to indulge, please indulge with me for just a bit. Um, it says, good morning, Congressman. I wanted to reach out to you about what benefits we can receive for employed individuals. You see, I work and earn about the minimum wage, more than 725, less than the 75,000 average uh, for it. However, the more I earn, the more taxes they would pull. Plus, I am not eligible for health and dental insurance for myself and my family, Medicaid. So she makes a lot more. I have to pay a higher premium on the family plan through my employer, and with these deductions, my take-home pay is literally, literally for bills, car payment for which is a necessity for transportation to and from work and schools for kids, utility bills, school loan that I need to pay. Thankfully, I was given time before I can restart paying back. The only positive thing in this really long email, I'll tell you, was thankfully I got back. The, the pause, and so, you know, um, Mr. Gatsari, so, you know, the global pandemic, and yeah, it's global, it affected everyone, including my district, which is 15 time zones ahead of us, um, caused both an immediate and lasting impact on students and families across the country. In response, the Trump administration instituted a pause on repayment of federal student loans and extended the pause in response to continued economic concerns during the pandemic. The Biden administration subsequently continued to extend the payment pass, also acknowledging the ongoing struggles of many families across the country. Um, Mr. Gatfari, um, can you speak more about the direct impact the payment pass has had on borrowers who are facing serious economic challenges before the pandemic and probably after the pandemic as this person has done? Uh, yes, Representative, thank you for the question. Um, there was a Philadelphia Federal Reserve study that showed that half of student loan borrowers had faced an employment or wage um, disruption uh, in the year prior to the study. Uh, and so those are the people who were helped with their student loan payments through the pause. Uh, my understanding is that the pandemic emergency will end in May. Yeah. And uh, on the IDR rule, um, in January, the uh, Biden administration released a proposed rule on changes to improve the income-driven repayment program, including amending um, terms of the re repay plan, the uh, revised pay as you earn, and streamlining the IDR program in general. That's very important, I think. Um, so from your view, what are some of the most promising components of this proposed rule? Uh, Thank you, Representative. So I'll highlight uh, a few things about the IDR proposal and IDR in general. The first one, which I mentioned earlier, it's important to note that under the new IDR plan, the proposed new IDR plan, people who earn more would still pay more. Uh, the second thing that is very important that we've touched on a couple times is ending the ballooning balances, uh, people having to pay back many times what they borrowed. Um, a third uh, attribute of the proposed IDR plan is increasing the amount of income that's excluded from repayment. And that's important because there are many people, and we've talked about non-completers of college who hold debt but don't have a degree, they are able to uh, not be driven in further into poverty or driven closer to poverty by uh, earnings that are relatively close to the poverty line. So those are some of the a important plan, attributes that it has. Say, a good plan, I would say. Um, let me just ask, um, um, do we have an agreement? I see this pandemic, uh, I mean this, you know, loan, uh, a loan program as something that happened in an emergency was, you, we all agree there was an emergency during the pandemic, right? Do we have an agreement of four of us, a five of us at least? Yeah, Mr. Looney, yes? No, yeah. okay, just. Um, and so this was a program, uh, uh, Secretary Cardona had the authority to uh, pro pre develop and propose this program during an emergency. Of course, there's some questions about it. That's for the Supreme Court now, we'll have to wait, I guess. But when there's a, say, a disaster in a part of the country, and 
emergency funds are sent there, including usually Congress would come up, pass supplemental bills, and you know, add them. those emergencies are helping those people in that affected areas, not the rest of the country. We're not complaining. This is the same situation, except that it's brought. And um, I know <laughs> I haven't asked my question. It's already nodding. Uh, no, I don't, you don't have to agree with me, sir, but that's a point of view. I think that unless you disagree that we provide disaster supplemental uh, appropriations, um, this is a situation where um, it's the same thing. The secretary had authority. He used it. It's a good program, including 15 time zones ahead of us. Thank you. Are you back, Chairman?